Today's reflection is taken from Isaiah 53 and is entitled The Servant King. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Servant king is a contradiction. How can someone be a <clears throat> king and a servant? Isaiah 53 contains a prophecy of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Isaiah taught that the Saviour would be despised and rejected, pierced and afflicted, that he would carry our sorrows and that he would be wounded by our transgressions. By almost every worldly standard, a hero is viewed as a powerful, mighty conqueror. There is the expectation that he will kill the enemy, conquer evil and live. God, however, often does things in ways that defy earthly standards. Man has failed to walk by faith and obey God, resulting in spiritual death and exile. But man is hopeless to correct this situa situation on his own, due to the sinful nature of his heart. God promised to send a saviour who would be born from a woman greater than Moses and a son of David. We see that this promised saviour would be an ordinary man in appearance like those he came to save and would suffer and die not for his own sin but for the sin of others. The promised saviour would receive the piercing, crushing and chastisement that we deserved. The sinless servant would take upon himself the iniquity of all. As a result, those to whom his blood are applied receive his healing and peace. What rightly belonged to man, sin, suffering and death, was placed upon him. What rightly belonged to him, righteousness and life, was given to man through repentance and faith in him. Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, was the fulfilment of God's promise to send a saviour. He was the suffering servant and our substitute. He was the better sacrifice the writer of Hebrews talks about. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world as proclaimed by John the Baptist. He suffered in our place. He died for our sin. He took the punishment we deserved. He did all this to fully obey the will and plan of his Father walking in perfect obedience and surrender to him. Because of his perfect obedience, even to death on a cross, we can be counted free. Not only did he die on the cross as our substitute, but he also rose from the dead three days later, and in him we have life. Oh, 
Heavenly Father, thank you for our servant King. Please help us to remember the sacrifice you made by allowing your son Jesus to come into this world as a baby, to grow into a man and yet be despised, rejected, and finally put to a cruel death on a cross. All this so that we could be forgiven our sins and enter an eternal relationship with you. Thank you that we have hope in you, that we will be accepted and loved through your grace and mercy, and that this is unchanging despite our failings. In Jesus' name, Amen.